At the age of 17, I found myself without a home with my mother, then 41, and my stepfather, 45, welcomed my half-sister into the world. My mother's youthful pregnancy with me was a result of stringent family pressures. She was coerced into motherhood by her orthodox and strict grandparents who insisted on the pregnancy after learning about it. This was especially hard on her as she hadn't intended to reveal her condition so early. But my father preemptively shared the news, thinking it would be joyous. They separated soon after, a split made simpler because they were never married. Growing up, my mother frequently reminded me of my precarious existence, claiming my life was a result of my father's mistake. Her resentment toward me was palpable, as she blamed me for stalling her career progress since she had to juggle college, work, and motherhood. Consequently, I was raised to keep a low profile, a strategy to avoid my mother's frequent irritations. Though my grandparents ensured I lacked nothing materially, emotionally, it was a different story. My mother's coldness and lack of affection made my childhood home feel more like a tense boarding house where I was merely tolerated rather than loved. Years later, after being expelled from my childhood home to make room for the new baby, my mother reached out again, not for reconciliation, but to ask for financial help. By then, I had established myself and was financially stable. Seizing the moment, I pretended willingness to assist, only to use this opportunity to publicly expose her long-standing cruelty through social media. The public revelation was my way of confronting the past, and perhaps, in a small way, to finally step out from the shadows of being an unwanted child to asserting control over my narrative. My story shared online not only brought my personal struggles to light, but also opened up conversations about familial obligations, resentments, and the heavy cloaks of secrecy families sometimes bear. Growing up, my early years were spent primarily under my mother's care, seeing my father only occasionally, perhaps a few times each month. However, after turning 14, the arrangement shifted, allowing me weekends with my father. This change, though, wasn't what I expected. It became clear that my father wasn't fully prepared for parenthood. He lived in a small, cramped apartment, which starkly contrasted with the more comfortable lifestyle my mother provided. The living conditions he afforded were modest, marked by the persistent smell of marijuana, and his financial instability was evident. My mother often voiced her frustrations about his unreliable employment. Despite the challenges, my father made every effort to make our weekends enjoyable. A stark contrast to my time with my mother, where I often felt unwelcome. The burden of my presence was evident in both households, but particularly so with my father, where even basic necessities seemed a stretch. As I entered my teenage years, my mother began a relationship with stepfather. He was neutral towards me, neither warm nor distant, which was a relief from the constant tension. They eventually married and soon announced they were expecting a child. By this time, I was 21 and fairly detached from the family dynamics. Choosing to take a gap year at 19 instead of immediately going to college, I soon regretted this decision when a family dispute led to financial support from my grandparents ceasing. Fortunately, I had secured a project trainee, providing me some income. On my 17th birthday, with my mother heavily pregnant, I began applying to colleges, still largely uninformed about how the arrival of my new sibling would affect our family. Shortly after the birth, my world shifted dramatically. My parents informed me that with the arrival of my half-sister, space had become a premium. They needed to convert the guest room into a nursery, and the only logical solution for them was for me to move out. Despite legally being an adult, I was unprepared to be pushed out of my home. My mother suggested I could stay with my father if necessary, but his situation hadn't improved. This conversation marked a pivotal moment, compelling me to reassess my life and independence, pushing me into a future where I had to navigate adulthood prematurely. My father had succumbed to some severe addictions over the years, developing a troubling combination of drug and gambling dependencies. His living conditions deteriorated alongside his habits, making his home far from a welcoming environment. This left me in a bind, especially since reconnecting with my grandparents wasn't an option. They had cut ties with my mother and, by extension, with me, viewing me merely as a part of her. Previously, my financial worries were non-existent because my grandparents took care of my mother and me. But once their relationship with my mother soured, so did their financial support towards me. My efforts to re-establish contact had been fruitless, and with my sudden eviction from home, I was also grappling with how to afford college. 
I had naively assumed my mother would support my education as a means to get me out of her hair. However, when I approached her about college funding, she not only refused but mocked my predicament and made it clear she was severing all maternal ties with me because, in her words, she had done her time. Her cold dismissal on what was supposed to be a joyous occasion for her was the last straw for me. For years, I had stayed silent, avoiding conflict. But faced with homelessness, I finally voiced my feelings. I told her she had failed as a mother. And surprisingly, I felt a sense of relief knowing I was finally breaking free from her toxicity. Her only response was to hasten my departure, claiming she no longer needed me now that she had a real daughter. The emotional toll of the day was immense, possibly the worst day of my life. Yet, I gathered myself, packed my belongings, and left, vowing never to return. My next stop was my father's place. Despite his addictions and the disarray of his living conditions, I was determined to improve my circumstances and not let the neglect of my parents define my future. Upon arrival, I found my father in a dire state, both personally and environmentally. The house was a mess, indicative of his year-long unemployment and ongoing financial drain from his gambling habit. He had recently inherited some money from his deceased father, which he was quickly squandering. My father, visibly high and barely coherent, attempted a weak greeting, but I was in no mood for half-hearted welcomes. Frustrated and desperate for change, I knocked the joint out of his hand. It was time for him to step up for both our sakes. I was determined to turn things around, not just for him, but for myself, refusing to let the legacy of neglect continue any longer. Determined not to let my father's destructive habits impact my own future, I confronted him with a firm resolve to stay permanently since my mother had evicted me. I expected him to rectify his past neglect and turn his life around. Initially, he didn't take me seriously and reached for his drop joint, but in a moment of intense frustration, I slapped him. Immediately regretting my impulsive action, I apologized, but the damage had momentarily driven him away retreating to his room while I spent a restless night in the living room. The next morning brought clarity. My father, now sober, wanted to discuss the prior evening's upheaval. I explained everything, emphasizing my need for his support and a significant change in both our lives. He was taken aback by my mother's decision to kick me out and even attempted to contact her, though she didn't respond. That day marked a new chapter it was decided I would live with him. Financial limitations meant that college was off the table, but he vowed to improve and become the father I needed. The slap, though regrettable, was a wake-up call for him. It wasn't a smooth journey. My dad occasionally fell back into his old patterns, but his commitment to betterment kept him coming back to the promise of change. College was not an option for me, so I threw myself into the job market, securing several project trainee that, while not lucrative, kept us afloat. Quitting them for college wasn't feasible as it would leave me without any income and I was reluctant to take on student loans given our precarious financial situation. I also took on the responsibility of managing our household because I couldn't bear to see my father continue to live in disarray. It was challenging as I balanced work and home life, and my father struggled to find employment due to his tarnished reputation from his previous jobs where his substance abuse was well known. The financial pressure and the role reversal in our household dynamic were frustrating for him seeing his daughter earn while he could not contribute. However, we persevered together, bound by necessity and a shared goal to stabilize our lives. Then, five years ago, an unexpected opportunity arose. A friend from another state, friend, whom I'd known since childhood, informed me that her father was expanding his business and opening a new location in our city. This news promised a potential new beginning and a better future that could uplift both my father and me from the depths of our struggles. We first met in middle school and became close friends. After her parents divorced, friend moved to a different state with her father, but still returned for the holidays. It was during these visits that we caught up, sharing details about our lives. She was well aware of the difficulties I had faced over the years and had even offered to help me with college tuition. However, I couldn't bring myself to accept her financial assistance because I didn't want to feel indebted to her. Despite my refusal, friend and her wealthy father, who owned a large-scale office supplies business, were always ready to help. Recently, they decided to expand the business, and friend reached out with a job opportunity for me. 
Concerned that she was merely doing me a favor, I asked her directly. She admitted that, while her father wouldn't normally consider someone my age for such a role, she had persuaded him because she believed in my drive and ambition. While it was technically a favor, her confidence in my abilities reassured me, and I accepted the position of public relations intern with a significantly better salary and longer hours. I also inquired if there might be a role suitable for my dad, considering his past experience. Fortunately, they offered him a position as machine operator, a role he was familiar with from previous jobs. This opportunity marked the first significant positive change for us in years. Since then, things have steadily improved. My dad has quit using weed and gambling, and we've moved into a better house in a nicer neighborhood where we've lived for the past three years. Life has been looking up. As for my mother, I had cut off contact after leaving her house and had no clue about her whereabouts until she reached out five weeks ago, sounding desperate. She explained that she and stepfather had started a business that had been failing miserably. Despite continuous investment, they were now broke and burdened with debt. They were selling everything to repay their debts, but were still falling short. Hearing that my dad and I were doing well, she assumed we could help. She made no apologies in her request, urging me to look past our differences for the sake of her young daughter's future. It was audacious of her to ask for my help considering our strained history. Although I agreed over the phone to consider her request, project trainee, I was conflicted. The truth was, I was not sure how to handle the situation given everything that had transpired between us. Despite my mother's urgent request for financial assistance, I had no real intention of providing her any help. Still, I found myself telling her I'd consider it, partially out of spite. Over the next few days, I engaged in conversations with her about her dire financial situation, all the while knowing I wouldn't contribute a dime. This charade continued without her knowledge, and I silently hoped for an apology that never came, which only diminished any lingering guilt I felt about deceiving her. Five days ago, the moment of truth arrived when she eagerly inquired about the financial support I had promised. It was then that I revealed I had no plans to help her financially. I confronted her about the neglect and mistreatment I endured throughout my childhood and reminded her that without even an apology, she had no right to expect anything from me. I expressed my feelings bluntly, calling her actions both foolish and indicative of her failures as a parent. After our conversation, I decided to share my story publicly. I made a detailed post on social media about everything, including her recent plea for help and her sense of entitlement to my support. My intention was clear. I wanted to expose the reality of her character which contrasted sharply with the facade she presented to the world. While I didn't see anything wrong with my actions, my father thought I had taken it too far. He believed I should have simply ignored her initial request for help rather than engage in any deceit. He argued that responding to cruelty with cruelty was unnecessary and advised that I apologize. However, I felt that my actions, though harsh, were justified given the lifelong neglect and emotional abuse I had endured. After some reflection and a conversation with my father, I began to see his perspective. He reminded me of the emotional toll these actions could take, not just on my mother, but on me as well. Despite not being a very present parent due to his own issues, he recognized that my actions stemmed from deep-seated resentment and anger that I had harbored for years. Ultimately, we agreed that while my actions provided a temporary outlet for my frustration, they were not conducive to personal growth or healing. This discussion helped me understand the importance of dealing with my emotions in a more constructive manner, and it marked a turning point in my relationship with my father as he acknowledged the pain I had carried from my past. I felt no obligation to apologize to my mother, given that she had never offered me any apologies for the hardship she put me through. Moreover, her expectations for my help seemed to stem from a deep sense of entitlement. She hadn't reached out, and it had been almost a week. My post about our situation had drawn quite a bit of attention, with many messages coming in inquiring about her. However, I had said all I needed to say publicly and was not interested in discussing it further. I was busy with work and eager to move past the drama. Finally, after nearly six weeks of silence, my mother contacted me. Her words were few and bitter. She expressed regret over trusting me and lamented ever having a child like me. The feeling, unfortunately, was mutual. 
I too regretted the relationship we had and sometimes wished I had grown up without her. She blamed my social media post for her inability to remain in town, claiming it forced her to move away due to shame and embarrassment. She seemed to think that I had gotten what I wanted with her departure, but in truth, her whereabouts made little difference to me. Our relationship had been strained and distant for so long that her moving away changed nothing in my life. She accused me of ruining her reputation, a typical response for someone who always made everything about herself. Despite these accusations, I felt a sense of relief knowing she was moving. It was best for both of us to have no further contact, and she had blocked me, ending our communication. It's now been a month since she moved. Life has been peaceful, and I have had no contact with her. Some relatives mentioned that she had cut off communication with the entire family, which seemed like a path she chose to isolate herself further. Meanwhile, my dad and I continue to do well. He even received a raise recently. Our lives were looking up, and I was content with how things were unfolding without her presence.